Hey y'all, welcome to the Lady Wing Designs channel. My name is Zakia, and this is a crafty channel, mostly about cross stitch and knitting. A lot of spinning coming back into play lately. Um, yeah, so that's what you have to look forward to. I hope everyone is doing well, whether you're a returning or new viewer. Um, yeah, thanks for being here. Super appreciate it. So, now that I've, like, blown through my intro, <laughs> um, like I said, I hope everyone's doing well. Today is Thursday, April the 1st, 2021. Um, so, welcome to April, I guess. Only, not really. People are getting snow today. Is that our April Fool's joke? Is it the weather? Because we're supposed to, uh, so I'm in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, in the U.S., if you don't know. And uh, we're supposed to have a freeze warning tomorrow morning. It's April. <laughs> Could we just get spring? I'd appreciate it. Um, yeah, so anyway, that is what's happening. It's actually pretty nice out now. It was a lot chillier earlier, but it's getting better as the day goes on. So yeah, let's just jump right in to the stuff that I have to chat about. Um, I have a few things for some admin. So, um... In the last video, I mentioned uh, Kay, the crazy sock lady, and that uh, that her video for Summer Sock Camp 2.0 was going to be out soon, and it dropped last Monday, or this Monday? I think it might have been this Monday, um, but either way, it's out. It's on her YouTube channel now. I will put um, a card up here in the corner, and it'll also be linked down below in the description box, um, as well everything else, all the people and uh, items, projects I mentioned, all of that will be linked down below, as well as where you can find me on the interwebs. So check out the description box if you're looking for a link to something. But yeah, so um, Kay's video about uh, Summer Sock Camp 2.0 is out, so if you're interested, in uh, what it's all about, go check it out. I have, I personally have not watched it, um, so there's that. I probably will at some point. I probably should, but it's there if you're interested. Just wanted to mention that. And then uh, speaking, this actually flows perfectly. Speaking of Kay, uh, in her most recent uh, like knitting podcast update episode, um, she, which I guess I'll also pop in a clip here because why not, um, she, one of the acquisitions that she got was from, uh, the Fiber Foundry, and she got, um, a skein of hand spun, and then she also got, um, it was a set of five minis, and I can't remember right now if the dyer sent them or if she bought them. I kind of like zoned out <laughs> uh, when she first started talking about the yarn, uh, you know, when they talked about the details and stuff, I missed all of that. I just looked up and was like, oh my gosh, that's hand spun, it's beautiful. Matter of fact, I came back into like focus and paying attention because she was talking about um, never, I think she said she had, she hasn't spun with hand spun or knit with hand spun before. Anyway, regardless, the yarn was beautiful. Um, I was like, oh man, that's going to be really nice for her to uh, work with. And then, you know, I moved on because I don't generally watch um, acquisition <laughs> sections of videos anymore. I like to uh, not enable myself as much. But um, anyway, I got on a Twitch stream last night uh, for Snoring Cat Fiber Arts. Uh, I She does late later night, well, I guess we could just say late night streams. Um... She doesn't come on until 10 p.m. my time, but I love just sitting and, and crafting and listening uh, to the chatter and everything late at night. It's it's a really soothing, like, calming stream, so totally recommend Snoring Cat Fiber Arts. Um, but one of the... This is, like, a very long <laughs> roundabout story, but um, in her Discord... One of the people that watches her posted about, hey, did y'all see my yarn was on YouTube? And it was the hand spun and the five minis that Kay received. Um, so 
the person behind that shop, her real life name is Kayla. Um, but on the interwebs, she goes by the Fiber Mage. And so I'll link her Twitch channel and her shop if, I don't know if it was because my internet is acting up right now or if the shop uh, maybe just be down or something for a second. It worked yesterday. <laughs> I did actually look at the shop. So um, if I can get the link to work for me, I'll link that down below. Um, but I'll definitely leave a link to the Fiber Mage uh, on her Twitch channel and her Instagram where she's also the Fiber Mage. So yeah, it was just super cool because I had actually seen it. You know, like I said, I missed the even the name of the shop or anything. Um, Although the shop and like her real name is different, so I might not have noticed. But still, it was super cool um, to to know that I actually well I don't chat with them often. I watch them chat with other people <laughs> um, because as you can imagine, you know you meet people over there and then they say, oh, this person's great and this person's great. And so you kind of end up like kind of running into the same uh, people like throughout different streams, right? Um, so yeah, I see the Fiber Mage chatting in lots of places and it was just super cool to uh, to see her yarn on, uh, on Kay's podcast. So yeah, there was also a coupon code that Kay mentions in the episode. So go check that out. Um, but yeah, super excited about that. That was just really fun. So other admin things, only a couple more. Um, in the last episode also, I asked y'all to vote for Parlor Cat or Window Cat uh, for what I should knit with some hand spun that I made. And so far, it is very much Parlor Cat. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to like actually like count up the votes and really look until I get ready to start it. So if you haven't seen that episode and you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to the last whip update. I think it, yeah, it was number 20. Um, so go back to whip update 20 and you can leave a comment for whether I should knit the parlor cat or the window cat. Um, okay, and the last admin was that I did a an unboxing and a review video it's well it's an unboxing in the beginning and then um, I ended up doing it differently than I thought I was going to but I think it worked out so uh, I was asked to uh, give some feedback on the Stitchly beginner cross stitch kit um, which is designed by a company in Ireland and so, yeah, um, if you didn't see that video, again, another card up here, um, that unboxing and review is there if you want to know what that's all about. And I'll be showing you a couple of the projects. Um, if you didn't watch that video, I'll be showing a couple of the projects that I've stitched on. Naturally, my attention span is just, like, gone everywhere else. But I do plan on coming back to uh, that kit and stitching through the patterns. So... With that being said, I think that is, and thank you as well, um, I guess I should say that now, thank you to um, the company for reaching out to me and uh, and asking if I would like to review it because I, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, um, am enjoying it, and uh, the scissors that they put in there are like my new favorite thing. <laughs> so um, thank you again for that. Okay, are we ready to talk some crafts? I know we are. So, let's talk finished objects. Um, speaking, since we were already kind of on the topic of hand spun, I'll just show this. I finished another skein. Uh, I think I had already plied this last time I filmed. So I think you all saw the plied hand spun. Don't remember. But um, this is it, all finished. It got its bath last week. So that's what it looks like. It's blowing out right there on camera. It's it's honestly like the color of my walls. <laughs> um, it's it's a beige creamish. Oh, excuse me. It's a beigey cream color, um, and this is a hundred percent merino from Hip Strings. It was in one of their, or it's okay. <laughs> it's from their uh, merino pack which is six 
little one ounce fluffs of fiber and the colorway that I got so I got two packs um, in the same colorway which is blue heron and this is one of the six colors that was in there this beige and yeah it's done um, it's just under a hundred yards of I'm gonna say again about a DK worsted um, you know Aaron in some spots but I'm really excited I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it just yet I have um, two more colors from this merino pack that um, that are gonna have two more skeins made from them so I think I'm gonna be waiting to see uh, what I get from those two colors because I think it would be fun to do like some type of color work but I don't know like how much yarn I'll have or anything yet so or if they're even gonna end up being the same yarn weight but uh, yeah one thing that I have noticed I can undo this um, so when you spin you um, when you finish plying generally um, you give it let me fluff it back out here generally you give it a bath um, so that you can actually set the twist and um, after you do that there are like a few different techniques and things that people do to help the yarn become what we call balanced okay so like not being overspun or over plied or anything so this skein and the uh, purple, pink, orange, purple skein that I showed in the last video, the one that I'm going to use for the window, or, well, right now it's looking like parlor cat, but the one that I'm going to use for the stuffy. So I, um, <laughs> I frequently forget about things uh, when I take them to have a bath, whether it's like knitwear that I'm blocking or hand spun. I tend to forget that it's back there. And so then it sits in the water for like hours, which so far has not hurt anything. Thank goodness, you know, knock on some wood for me. But like that being said, um, both of those skeins, they were pretty good, like pretty balanced. It, you know, would twist up a little bit before I washed it. And both of them, I left them in there for a few hours, y'all. Like it's hanging perfectly straight. Um, meaning that this yarn is perfectly balanced. Like, I don't even know what to do with that information. Um, it was, it was very shocking because I felt like I, um, and even just looking at it, I feel like I plied this one. I can show y'all. You can see the ply on the yarn, um, is, you know, it's it's pretty well plied um, because I was treadling faster um, on this one I wanted to experiment with um, you know I'm just still getting used to the wheel and so the first skein I thought the pink orange purple I thought that um, I could have put in just a little bit more twist and so this one I treadled um, a good bit faster I think when I plied um, so I was you know expecting it to be something and yeah, so it's perfectly plied seemingly. Um, so now what I'm curious about, and maybe if any of you out there uh, also spin, you can leave me a comment with your experiences. Um, but I'm wondering if if it was actually like plied really well, you know, and balanced really well, or if sitting in the water for a few hours like helped it get to that point. I don't know. I am not sure. That is not twisted enough for me. Hold on. Hold, please. Okay. There we go. Now it's twisted a little too much. There. Okay, we got it. <laughs> it always takes me a couple tries to get the hank that I want. But, um, yeah, so that's this hand spun. I'm really excited to use it. Like I said, I just want to finish some of those other colors first. So there's that. 
Um, the next finished object is uh, knitting. So I will pop in a picture probably here of the socks that I finished for my boyfriend. Don't mind my janky couch. I've been here a while. What can I say? <laughs> just gonna kind of cover that. It's fine. It, it still sits up. It just, it's uh, leaning in the cut <laughs> real hard. Anyway, I finished my boyfriend's socks. Um, yeah, I personally loved them. And uh, so I, at first I was going to make him wait before I gave them to him so that I could show them here to y'all. Um, and then I just figured, you know, whatever, um, I'm just going to give them to him. And he was wearing them the next day, which if you saw, so the next day was yesterday, uh, Wednesday. So if you were on Instagram, you would have seen that I like posted a picture of him wearing them. Um, yeah, so that was, that was really nice. I didn't expect him to like immediately wear them. Uh, yeah. And then I was like, oh, you know, I noticed you were wearing your socks. That's nice. And then he was like, yeah, they're actually pretty comfortable. So score. <laughs> I'm feeling great about it. Um, yeah, now I just have to remind them that, remind him that he doesn't have to wash them after like one wear. Does anybody else do that? Um, like wear your socks more than one day before you, or more than one time before you like wash them? Maybe not like back to back days. I can understand that. I personally do that, but I'm also lazy. I'm not gonna I do take them off though. Um, I don't, I try to like switch, this is TMI, but like I try to switch socks um, between what I wear, like just walking around during the day and because I have to sleep with socks on or my feet are freezing. Um, so I try to like change socks between what I walk around in during the day and what I wear to bed so that, you know, you're not like tracking dirt and germs and all the things. I'm sure you get it, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, because I know that he washes them in the machine, um, I'm just going to tell him, like, hey, you don't have to wash them after you wear them once. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that was my boyfriend's socks. The yarn that I used for them, the main color, uh, I pulled from both of these. Uh, I only used a little bit from this one to, I think it was, it was on the second sock, to try to... It was something to do with the way the um, color scheme, the pattern in the gradient worked out. But anyway, this is a Zauber Ball Crazy that I got from a friend a while ago. Um, and then this little nugget. It's not like necessarily the same part of the gradient, but it's the same yarn. Um, yeah, so this is Zauber Ball Crazy in the colorway Domino. It's a gradient yarn, as you can see on my boyfriend's socks. Uh, it goes between uh, whites, different shades of gray, and black. Um, and a lot of how it kind of changes through the colors is uh, different marlings, um, which I think you can tell in the picture. So, yeah. Really enjoyed it. Um, I actually pulled a little bit from this skein, both for the color repeat, but or gradient, but also so that I could keep as much of this repeat as possible for me, um, because I really love this yarn, and it's been sitting forever for me to do something with, uh, but, you know, I'm happy that I used it for socks for him, because he likes them. So that was the main color, and then the heels, I used um, this leftover yarn from another pair of socks that I knit him a while ago. Uh, this is Lang Yarns Javol Color, um, but I don't know what the colorway is. It um, It's mostly black and then it has yellows and, uh, or yellow and this is a darker green. So maybe you can find it. I bought that four, almost four years ago, so I don't even know if it's still in production or floating around anywhere. And then the other socks that I finished, um, this, yeah, they were both finished this week, so no, no, I finished my boyfriend's socks on Friday, 
and um, these socks I finished Tuesday because I uh, finished knitting them while I was on the IVKN, which is International Virtual Knit Nights. It's a Facebook group. I'll leave it. Uh, I'll link it down below. It is a paid annual subscription, so you only pay once a year um, to help with the cost of the Zoom room and. Uh, things like that every once in a while they'll do uh, prizes for different things and I imagine that also goes towards shipping and stuff like that um, but yeah so anyway I'll leave that down below if you're interested their family um, I've known a lot of them for a few years now so I love that group um, but yeah I was working on the second sock for this pair while I was chatting with them Tuesday and I finished it up so there are two they are the same. This uh, is the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern by Erica Luter, um, who is Dreams in Fiber. And I'm pretty sure that she has these patterns now on, um, on her personal website. Fairly positive, so I will uh, be sure to link there. Um, yeah, because, you know, always trying to link things other than Ravelry if I can find somewhere else. So, um, yeah, each sock looks like this. I did my usual 2x2 two two, uh, cuff. I use a German short row, nope, German twisted <laughs> cast on, if anyone's wondering. Um, I did a longer leg on these. I, It's funny, I don't know why I did that. Um, if you're new here, you don't know, my favorite color is yellow. Uh, preferably mustard or gold or just generally a bright yellow. I'm here for it. Uh, my least favorite color <laughs> is pink. So um, I'm not quite sure why I did really long legs on these and it, it wasn't a problem or a bother or anything. Uh, I just think it's funny that now I have really long pink socks and they're, it's not my favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of the second sock I was definitely like, oh my gosh, I cannot look at this pink anymore. I'm over it. So, yeah, but I do love them. Uh, I chose the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern because this is Harry Potter yarn in the colorway Yule Ball. Um, so the dyer behind this is Gracelyn Wool. I don't know if she is still dyeing or anything. I don't think that she is. Um, the last few times I've looked, I haven't been able to find a shop link or anything, so I don't think she is. But um, she did a mystery Harry Potter sock yarn club a few years ago, and I joined, of course. And uh, this was, this is actually the last of the colorways that I had to knit up from that collection. Um, yeah, I had already knit the other two into socks, naturally. And uh, yeah, so I decided, you know, I should knit this pair into, sorry, I'm looking out the window. I should knit this pair into some socks too, right? And finish out that collection. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy about that. Um, one of the things that I noticed with all of her skeins, the evenness of, of the, of the dye job, um, I think you can see there, like, the speckles are pretty consistent throughout the whole thing. There wasn't really any point where it was like, oh, this part didn't get as saturated, this part didn't get uh, as many speckles. Like, it's very even, um, which, you know, just the nature of hand dyeing yarn, you don't necessarily see a lot. Um, you know, it, it, yeah, I just, I love that. Um, and I, Definitely was able to tell that on all three of the skeins, like I said, that I used. So that was super cool. But anyway, back to what I was saying about the colorways. Um, this is the Yule Ball colorway. And I'm fairly positive that this is based off of Hermione's dress because it was pink. Every time I go back and I watch that part of uh, Goblet of Fire, I'm like, oh, I don't, I didn't remember that her dress was pink. And, like, I'm always expecting her to come down that staircase in a completely <laughs> different color. And I don't know why, but anyway, so I wanted to use the Hermione's Everyday Stock Pattern for that. Um, yeah, and I'm super excited that I did. They turned out really cute, even if they are pink. Um, so here's what I have left of the main color. 
and uh, I didn't weigh these when I started, so I didn't bother to weigh them um, when I finished. It's whatever. They'll, I'll just have scraps. And then this little mini is what I used for the heels. It's more of a Kelly green than what it's showing up as. Um, think like... I think it's a little closer to maybe 890 DMC color. But anyway, um, like I said, it's more of a Kelly green. This is Montebello from uh, Rain's Obsessive Stitchery. I got a 10 minis that were 10 grams each uh, from a trunk show from her also a few years ago. Um, the same summer that I got this yarn. So yeah, that's what I used. Super excited about those socks. Um, I did heel flap and gusset, as you can see. The flap and the turn are in the contrast color. And then a uh, standard wedge toe. Because I started telling you the details and then I didn't, you know, carry through. So, the next thing, pardon the crinkling. The next uh, finished for now, it's not a complete finished object. Um, is the Made to Create Sal by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. So, here I can show you this. Whoops. So, um, this is a mystery stitch along. Uh, you get one part every month. It started back in January. And so, at the end of every month, for six months, we're getting a part of the pattern. So, there's the original, like, blurred out image uh, of the pattern. And I think you can kind of see, maybe, um, we are spelling the word create. I needed that. So we're spelling the word create. And uh, part three dropped at the end of March on the 25th. And um, I was just working on, I don't remember what I was working on that week. But I was just focused on, um, on other things. I think I was working on Stitchly stuff by that point. So... Uh, yeah, so I just said, you know, I'll wait until I finish this uh, review video because I really wanted to get that done this past weekend. And so I was like, then I will pick up my Made to Create and hopefully get it done before the end of March because uh, January and February's parts, I finished them in that month. Um, because I just, I love this design so far and Sally's patterns, if you've been here any amount of time during my cross stitch journey at all you will have heard me say that I love Sally's patterns um, they're super simple to work on and they're fun the colors are great I seriously can't recommend them enough so when I pick this up every month I am like attached to it <laughs> until I get it done and then I'm sad that I don't have anything else to work on it uh, for the month but anyway like I said we're stitching the word create and it's made up of all different uh, types of hobbies and creative outlets that people can have. So um, the first month we got the E um, and then the second month we got the A. So this month we got the R. So um, I should clarify we've been getting like part of the border each time. So the first part was the E and the camera and the jigsaw puzzle. Um, the A, of which, let me just go through what all of these are, because it's honestly pretty cool. And I'm gonna, okay, we're just gonna fold it. <laughs> It'll just be easier. So the E is made of uh, some paint here, a colored pencil, needle and thread, uh, a crochet hook. This is a jigsaw puzzle, a uh, puzzle piece, and uh, a camera for photography. And then the next month, we got the A, which is made up of stork scissors, and these are diamond painting drills. And then uh, a couple of buttons, and we got the ball of yarn with the knitting needles. So this month, for March, we got this super long tape measure, <laughs> which um, was actually really fun to stitch 
Um, I really enjoyed that, but it was like the last thing that I was accomplishing this month. So, you know, it was kind of down to the wire uh, rushing, but it was still super fun to stitch. And then uh, the R is made of a wooden uh, embroidery hoop, a wooden hoop, uh, and then uh, quilting shapes, um, a quilting star, a paintbrush right here, and a skein of DMC floss. And then, like I said, the tape measure. And, um, yeah, so I, I super loved this month. That DMC floss is just, I loved that. Um, so in the, so the picture of the model stitch is stitched this way with the embroidery hoop and how it uh, meets up with this paintbrush down here. But in the actual charting of the pattern, the hoop comes more up here um, and like the yellow from the hoop and the paintbrush all kind of runs together. So um, naturally, you know, people kind of notice the difference. And so Sally sent us um, the charted, you know, a little close up of this uh, part of the R so that if we wanted to stitch it this way, we could. And I liked it better that way um, because the yellow didn't run together. I think it just makes it more obvious as to what everything is. So I went that route. I forgot. <laughs> I had told myself to do that and forgot uh, when I first started stitching it. So I actually had to rip this, this bottom part out, but it was fine and it was worth it. So that is that. Here's the whole piece again. I'm super enjoying this. I'm excited to see uh, whether April will finish up the the left side and stitch the C and some other stuff or if we're gonna get the T over here because I and I mean who knows we might get the other E I have no idea what Sally's gonna you know release next but I would imagine that we'll get either the T or the C because there's kind of stuff you know easier to count but also we have this tape measure so you know <laughs> maybe we will get the other E who knows um, so I bought the kit for this, as you can see. So I'm using the called for DMC flosses and the um, called for 32 count Zweigart linen. She has different uh, fabric counts that you can use. I got 32 count linen. And um, yeah, so there's that. I'll put that up later. And that is all of my finished objects for right now. I, uh, I'm really excited with all of that. Oh, well, yes, that is all of my finished objects. So let's go right into whips. Um, and since we're already talking about cross stitch, we'll keep going down that route. So, um, sorry, stuff on the fabric. So the Stitchly kit, if you watched that unboxing video, um, you know, I'm just showing that same stuff again. Um, I haven't made any progress. So this is what this pattern looked like before it got washed. Um, it was a, it's on Ada and it was printed on the fabric um, or stamped. I'm not sure of the correct terminology there, um, but the pattern was on the fabric so that you could just practice stitch over it because again, the kit is uh, a beginner cross stitch kit if you've never cross stitched before. So um, yeah, as you can see, all the ink and stuff washed off very nicely. Um, but just because of where the placement was of the rainbow on the chart, it's you can see where I've put it in the hoop uh, before now. And I just don't have enough fabric up top here to center the rainbow, which is fine. Um, I was already thinking, and then someone also commented on that video, you know, why don't you just uh, put some words under the rainbow, uh, to help, you know, even it out. And that's totally what I'm going to do. Um, I had already thought of that. I just didn't know what words I was going to put there. And, uh, it, they just kind of came to me. Um, so I'm going, I am not sure exactly how yet, but I'm going to add, um, diversity, equality, inclusion. I'm not quite sure if it's going to be in that order. I haven't decided. I don't know. Um, It'll probably be in that order, but yeah, 
I'm gonna just have like some backstitched letters down here um, to kind of even it out for when it's in the hoop. And so uh, it has already been washed. I just need to add those words. I'm gonna do it in black. And then um, as soon as I finish that part, I'm not gonna wash it again. I'm just gonna go ahead and iron it and frame it. And this is the little, sorry for that super awkward noise. Um, this is the hoop that they sent for it to go in. It's a four inch um, satin beech, birchwood, beechwood, one of the two. <laughs> Hold on, I'll just, I want to get this right. I might as well tell you correctly. Satin finished beechwood embroidery hoop. Um, yeah, they're really nice. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to be. I am going to finish it in this hoop. Um, so like I said, I just need to add those words on there and then it'll be ready for finishing. And then, uh, while I've got this out, the, so this is kind of a finish because the pattern itself is done, but I'm calling it a whip because I need to add the words still. Um, <clears throat> and then this is one of the patterns that you get in the kit to stitch up. I'm going to hold it back here. It's this, um, just keep swimming with the three fish. And these three dots up here, I'm not going to include that. Um, I'm going to center this more and it'll be just keep and then swimming. And I will put the dots down there. Um, so this is all I have on it so far. Like I said, <laughs> it's the same exact spot that I left the tutorial because um, I was kind of uh, like focusing on this uh, last weekend. Uh, you know, like I said, to get that review and everything up because I wanted to get that accomplished last weekend. Um, I haven't even taken out that practice little thing that I did on the video. So, yeah, I will get back to this, though, because I am enjoying it. Um, the patterns are, you know, simple and they're cute. So, plus I have uh, a couple more that I definitely want to do. But that is where I am so far on the fish. So there is that, and like I said before, um, overall I really am enjoying this kit, so definitely recommend um, if you want to try to enable a new crafter, or you have enabled a new uh, crafter, a new stitcher, I, um, I think it's a great kit. Okay, so one, or a couple more things to talk about. Stitching wise, I'm just going to take this needle minder off. I have to take this out of the cue stamp. So these are both. Hold on. These are both uh, patterns by Diana Shop Ukraine on Etsy. And um, these are the last two in the series that I have to finish. So I've done the uh, and I can show you Autumn. I've done the Summer Tree. I finished it in 2018. Um, and then, like a month later, started August Tree, or Autumn Tree, good grief. Um, which, give me a second, I'll show you. Which I finished last year. So this is Autumn. It took two years, but it got done. <laughs> so that's the Autumn Tree. Don't mind that Kool-Aid stain. Always keep your projects in bags, people, not just sitting on the floor and where open cups of Kool-Aid can fall on them. So, um, come on. So, this next one is Winter Tree. I started this on the winter solstice uh, last year in December. So, this is what it looks like. I... I was stitching along, you know, doing all these other snowflakes, and I saw um, the outline for this one because I did my background completely first, um, and I thought that this snowflake, I had just messed it up and, like, you know, left off, accidentally skipped over parts. I didn't. It's charted that way. 
I don't know how to feel. I think it's funny because, you know, naturally it's like, oh, that's a mistake because it doesn't look like the other ones. But it also kind of bothers me a little that it is purposely charted that way. I don't know. But I'm leaving it that way, so whatever. So this is where I am on it right now. Uh, as you can see, the background is complete. Uh, all the colors for the tree are done. And I've just... Well, not really. I mean, I'm about... Uh, I'm maybe a little over halfway done with the 996, that light blue. It's kind of outlining those areas of snow. So I still have to do these two snow, snowflakes, this patch of snow, and this one um, for outlining with the blue. And then the rest of it is just filling in uh, with the snow color. So... I, um, this is going to be my next cross stitch to focus on and finish because it's really close to done. And <laughs> because winter is trying to stick around and, uh, maybe it's because I haven't finished this tree yet. So I'm going to do that. The plan, the hope was to finish it by the time that, uh, spring equinox came at the end of March, but that didn't happen. Um, I did, however, start the spring tree on the spring equinox. So let me switch to that pattern so I can show you. And like I said, these are by Diana Shop Ukraine. Ukraine is in the country on uh, Etsy. She has these. Um, so I bought these all individually. There is a set that she has. It's like a um, it's like a bell pole. Um, you know, long and skinny type design, and it has all four of the seasons, like, back to back, but, you know, like, in line with each other, um, and I want to say that it is, like, the same tree designs, but they don't have the colorful backgrounds, and, uh, that's actually part of what drew me to them, so I bought them, well, it was, like, a pattern sale or something, but I bought them individually instead of in that one chart, because I wanted the backgrounds, um, so yes, all four of these have been full coverage. So that's the spring tree. And um, when I finish, when all four of these are finished, I will uh, dig out the summer tree. And y'all can see that one too. So this is where I got to with spring. Um, and I think I only worked on it like two days uh, last month. The, the equinox that Saturday and I think the Sunday that that next day so just a little bit of the background started so that I can say I started it when I started spring this year um, I also this spring equinox was also the same day that I started the pink socks just coincidentally um, I started them because I just wanted to um, but it worked out well <laughs> because it was pink and spring had started so Anyway, I, um, I now have to get this back on the key stamp because I do want to focus on winter. Um, so that is that. The only other whips that I have, it's only a couple more. I started a new <laughs> knitting project. Is anyone surprised? I hope not. Um, yeah, so Monday, I, so I interviewed for a job, um, if you haven't been around the last couple of weeks uh, or last couple of videos, I have been job hunting, um, slowly like getting more and more into it, which is really good. Um, yeah, so last week I did an interview. It was an open interview day uh, for a position and uh, I did the interview. It went well and then uh, I did kind of like a follow up anyway or uh, Monday and I got the job so it's part-time um, <clears throat> so I'm still gonna be like looking for a second thing because right now I kind of need two jobs until I uh, start school again in the fall but yeah I'm super excited um, and it was just like a big adulting win sorry I'm just now realizing that one of my sticky notes is like not on my laptop <laughs> anyway um, yeah, it was, it was just like a big adulting win for me. Um, yeah, so anyway, to celebrate. And I didn't even, I ended up not uh, starting it until like after midnight. So it wasn't even, or the next morning. But, 
okay, sorry, cars. But yeah, I still want to talk about it. Um, I still started it. I am super stoked. So first I just want to mention, uh, this is my Notions pouch for knitting. I need to make myself a cross-stitch Notions pouch. Um, but I keep, um, I, whoops, sorry. I keep stitch markers in this little case, uh, progress keepers in this one. So lobster claws in here. Um, there are some progress keepers, or yes, there are some progress keepers in here, but not a lot. Uh, my tape measure, I actually have two in here. Uh, I have my, I have some crochet hooks in here, which is good to know, because, okay, when I do need them, I'm always looking for them. So some of them are in here. Um, I have my spinners card, so that's for telling you, like, how much, uh, angle twist you have on it, twist angle I mean, um, and then it, there's also a wraps per inch on here, so you can measure what weight of yarn it is, I keep scissors in here, um, yeah, so, like I said, I need to make myself a cross stitch notions pouch, but I haven't yet, so, I love this, um, it's got purple fabric on the inside, and the outside is space, uh, which is perfect because uh, I got this from Kalisha at Quirky Monday Craft Cast um, here on YouTube. She is also multi-craftual and um, I want to say that she's still making bags to sell. Um, I, I honestly need to catch up with her. I haven't watched an episode in a while. I need to do that. Um, but yeah, I got this way back in the beginning of my knitting career and I love it. It's also glow-in-the-dark fabric, so whenever I, like, have it in the bed or, like, if I travel somewhere and it's, like, sitting there, I literally have to cover it up at night. It, I don't know why, but it freaks me out for it to be <laughs> glow-in-the-dark, so. But I do love it. Um, yeah, so that's, it's gotten a lot of use. Anyway, that was over in here. So this project bag also is from... Uh, closer to the beginning of my knitting career um, and YouTube uh, career, I guess we could say. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's fall. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, my favorite season, so I had to buy it. And it just has uh, different words on it. Falling leaves, family, uh, be grateful. That might be it. <laughs> Um, and it's got some polka dots on the inside. This is from Aggie's Bags. I don't remember the exact name of, uh, like the Etsy shop or anything. So I'm going to go back. Uh, I have to go back in the podcast show notes, uh, like from when this was a knitting podcast solely. And, um, I'm going to have to find the shop link, but I love this bag. Uh, I recently, I had some design attempts, uh, in this bag and I took them out. Uh, one of them got frogged and one of them is going to get frogged, but it's going to get redone so that I can use more of the yarn. Um, I'm looking at it. So anyway, they were in this bag and there's no need for that when I always need project bags. So I took it for this new pattern. Um, naturally I don't have this pulled up at all so let me let me do that for you so this is the U York pattern so U E W E as in a female sheep York uh, shawl and it's by Suzanne Summer oh okay not helpful I'm just gonna pop in a picture here <laughs> So, uh, we'll put it over here. This is the shawl. It, um, it has brioche and garter stitch in the main section. And then, uh, there's a garter stitch, uh, border around the whole thing. And then an I-cord border, uh, at the very edge of it all. And, uh, there's a three color version and a four color version. I am doing the four color version I think. Not quite sure yet. Okay. We're just going to keep moving and hope that, oh good, they cut it off already. <laughs> so, like I said, it's 
brioche um, and that was actually why I started it I just felt like doing uh, something that had you know a little something to it I didn't I've been doing a lot of like mindless patterns and just garter or just stockinette and things like that lately and I just wanted to do something with a technique in it and um, I haven't done brioche in a while I actually ripped uh, the cable that this is on was still in my Shisui Shrug, which is another pattern by Suzanne Summer. If you were here around this time last year, you will remember. It was actually whip update number two because my sweater was the thumbnail. It was whip update number two. So that day, that was the last time that, uh, that it was basically a whip, honestly. Um, that day I filmed. I filmed once. Uh, and put it on or like it started filming once or something at some point I decided I didn't like it or started over for some reason and I had to film twice so the first time put it on tried it on for y'all it was great the second time I tried it on and did not realize until after I had finished recording that I had knocked some stitches off the needle and it was near the edge where there were increases and decreases in brioche and I was like okay I can't deal with this right now we're gonna sit down which was not a good idea. I should have at least like put in progress markers to catch those dropped stitches and I didn't. I'm sure that it was worse before I pulled these needles out. It's literally been sitting in my bedroom for a year and I, the same, some of the skeins that were in it were kind of precious to me because they were just really beautiful and I really wanted to save those because um, they're one-offs or just ones that I'm not going to get again. So, yeah, needless to say, that's being frogged. Uh, we'll probably do a frog with me video at some point during April. Um, yeah, I'm, o I'm okay with it. Those skeins are going to turn into something else great. And I am going to make another Shisui Shrug at some point. Um, I'm just going to, you know, I'm hoping I'll be able to buy yarn for it or something. But anyway, so I decided I'm going to, I want to do something else in brioche. Um, and it just happens to be another Suzanne Summer pattern because she has a lot of great, uh, a lot of great patterns that include brioche. So, um, so far, whether I'm doing the three color or the four color version, I know what other colors I'm using, uh, but I am, I'll just show them to you when we get there because one of them has to be frogged out from a different project. So there's a lot of frogging in my future. So these are what I'm putting together. There you go. So this one is uh, one of the skeins that I got from the Quotable Dumbledore Sock Club uh, that was done last year by Lolo Did It. So this is the plush sock base. Come on. This is her. This is Lolo Did It on their plush sock base, which is 75% superwash merino. 15% nylon, 10% tinsel, and um, the quote that the quote that this one was inspired by. Um, so the name of the colorway is Muggle Magazine, and um, the quote. This was July 2020 skein, and the quote is. Um, I was merely reading the Muggle magazines. I do love knitting patterns. <sighs> so do I, Dumbledore. So do I. So that's what this one is. Um, it's just kind of a like silvery type base to it, and then it has um, blue and purple little speckles throughout. It's really pretty. And then that <laughs> is to offset the craziness of this colorway. Um, so this is Whips on Sticks Fiber Co. This is the only skein that I um, have gotten from them so far. They're still dying, I'm pretty sure. Um, so this is Whips on Sticks Fiber Co. in the colorway Rave. It's a one of a kind, um, which is frequently abbreviated like that as O-O-A-K. That's what that means, one of a kind. Um, so it's fingering weight also. This is 92% superwash merino and 8% lurex, uh, L-U-R-E-X. So that is what is giving it the sparkle. Um, 
yeah, I love it. And as you can see, I think Rave is the perfect name for it. It's just got every color over in there. Um, just, it's, it's beautiful chaos. Um, oh, and the little scissors that we got from Stitchly. Seriously, my new favorite thing. Like, I have them in this knitting bag because I just love them. So, this is where I am. And I'm super excited about this project because it's going to be completely reversible. Um, if you don't know about brioche, um, one, it's really fun to knit. Don't let it... Um, scare you or frighten you or anything it t just takes a minute like anything else it just takes a minute to kind of understand what's happening and get the rhythm of it um but it's honestly not hard um yeah so brioche itself is reversible already um and then garter is i mean pretty you know pretty reversible if you're not doing certain striping or anything so this entire shawl will be reversible because the center section is brioche and garter and then there's a garter border and eye cord so it's gonna be oh my gosh y'all I'm so excited so let me actually show it to you so um, for the sake of like uh, the pattern right this is the right side uh, which is the side with the progress keeper on it and because I'm finally using uh, the one skein that I have from whips and whips on sticks I decided I would use this little progress keeper that came with the skein uh, when I ordered forever ago so it's their logo um, on like a you know chaotic crazy color colorful background which I think is fitting um, so this is one side I love it I think you can see the kind of arrows uh, that are happening here and I I just love this pattern so much it was funny the first time that these colors kind of switched in the center here on the designs um, because if you know about brioche stitches you know there are barks BRK which stands for brioche knit but a lot of people will just say bark because that's what it looks like and burps BRP which is brioche pearl but it looks like burp, right? Okay. I, I love knitting brioche because the whole time I'm sitting there chanting barks and burps and it's just really funny. Um, but yeah, so in some rows, you know, you're, you're working um, barks and burps with that color and it would, there was one point where I was like, oh no, is this right? Am I doing it right? I'm doing a different stitch now and it's like, just follow the pattern. The designer knows what they're telling you to do just follow the pattern <laughs> so yeah I'm loving how it's turning out so that's one side um, and this is the reverse side so as you can see where these were dark on the other side now the light color is peeking through and vice versa with these so yeah I just there's um, I'm in a repeat section right now um, where you have to repeat a certain amount of rows so that you have to do it three times total and I've just finished the first time so this is what I'm about to sit here and work on I'm really excited um, yeah so brioche flat if again if you've never done brioche um, I absolutely love it I don't know that I've done brioche in the round actually but I should because I um, I just love brioche so much I love brioche um, it's super squishy and it's stretchy and it's just amazing um, but when you work brioche flat, um, you so you work across with one color. So this is my color A, the lighter one. So I work across in that color. I leave, I drop it, leave it here, and then I slide my stitches back over here to this side of the needle again. And you pick up your other color and you work across. So each row you kind of work over twice. There is such thing, you can YouTube it, um, there is such thing as one pass brioche. I've never done that before. Um, I find it very soothing to work over each row. I don't mind that. But also for this pattern, I'm not about to try to figure that out <laughs> because there's just a lot of like design and shaping and stuff going on. So I'm fine doing, uh, you know, two passes on each row. Like I said, it's soothing for me. It doesn't bother me. Um, yeah so I'm really I'm really enjoying this I'll show you the other side again I'm so in love with this already I cannot wait to see um, how far I am during the next episode 
of of whip update so I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting back to that um, although who knows I'm kind of wanting to work on winter tree today I honestly might try to finish that up today that's sounding like actually that's sounding like a good goal I might be doing that so um, plans because that oh no okay this is it for works in progress I promise so on my electric eel wheel mini um, I was spinning this gray bobbin the last time the last time we spoke you can see it's pretty thin but it's all done um, so this was the second ounce of this gray this is um, this is another okay. this is another color from that hip strings merino pack that I mentioned so uh, it's a hundred percent merino not super wash um, I'm pretty sure it's not because that wasn't on the tag. Um, yeah, so this is the first bobbin that I had done a while back, and this is the second one. Um, you can see it's not really the same. Um, I'm thinking just because this is thinner, so we'll see what the heck comes out to be once it's applied. Um, I'm going to let this, this is going to be resting for a while because the current project on my, I'm going to apply these on my Ashford Traveler. Um, and yeah, I, I'm working on a project right now, so they have to wait. But also, okay. um, the, this, that gray and the other color that I have left to do, their first bobbins have been resting for like months on end now. So, well, not months, months, right? Multiple weeks. So I'm going to let the, the second bobbins for both the colors like also rest a while. Um, so while we're talking about my e-spinner, because, whoops, sorry, because that's what the gray bobbin was spun on, I have reloaded uh, this purple bobbin of hip strings purple from that same set. I reloaded this bobbin on there because, as I mentioned last week, I'm going to be adding this uh, little bit of fiber to it. Um, so this is a gray. It's in the Whiskers on Kittens colorway. And it's got a superwash merino, tussa silk, and cashmere over in it. So it's, I'm not going to take it out, but it's like a medium gray. It has some light grays over in there too. It's dark, it's a little bit darker than the one I just showed though. So that is going to get added onto the end of this. You can see my end here. Um, I'm going to add that on and spin that onto that bobbin. Probably about to earthquake again, sorry. So that is that. Where did I put this bobbin? And then on the Ashford, um, I don't know that I should, I think I put in a picture last time uh, that I had just started this. So this is the 100% uh, merino fiber from Wild Time Art on Etsy. Um, I think this is in the pewter colorway, but I'm not for certain. Um, so yeah, I finished spinning this last week also I think uh, I actually finished spinning it outside it was a really nice day I only sat outside for an hour which was luckily enough time to finish it because there was pollen there were wasps it like I love the color yellow but the whole like a uh, floor area out there is covered in pollen that is not the type of yellow I like <laughs> So yeah, I spun out there that day. I am, I, I'm gonna try not to do that for a while. Um, but we'll see. It's really nice days. We've been getting some really nice sunlight and stuff. You know, when it's not storming uh, because rainy season. So yeah, I'm hoping that our rainy season is um, over, if not is almost over, if not already over. Um, but yeah, anyway. So I finished. I finished spinning this. You can kind of see how uh, how thin it is. Uh, I'm pretty happy with what I got, so hoping I can spin this next bit um, equally as thin. So the bobbin that's the purple bobbin that's currently on the e spinner and this um, will be one ply of another skein, and then the other skein I showed this last time <coughs> is. Um, this two ounces of um, merino BFL cross. It's a purple and a brown. 
and it's from Gaffer's Glory. I don't know if last week in the video I might have said Gaffer's Gallery. It's Gaffer's Glory. <laughs> um, yeah, that I bought via Mad Fuzzy Yarns. So this is two ounces and this will be the other single that I, um, where did I just put this bobbin? <laughs> so that'll be the other singles that all of this gets plied with. Um, this and the East Spinner stuff. So, um, that's it for whips. I've been working just a little bit on spinning, not a ton. Um, I'm hoping to do some more today though. So, plans real quick. Um, I am hoping to pull out Snape. I'm not going to show him. I showed him at the end of last week's video. I'm hoping to work on Snape. Um, because like I said, I think it would be pretty cool if I could work on finishing Snape by Harry Potter's birthday. Um, kind of a joint Harry Potter goal that I want to do with Alma from Alma's Little Wonders. And, um, yeah, so I'm hoping that I have to work uh, a baseball game on Sunday, this upcoming Sunday. And then that Monday I'm hoping to, uh, start putting in a few stitches a day on Snape. Um, to reach that goal. So we'll see. I'm hoping it'll work. I'm really excited to get back to Snape, so I'm hoping it'll work. I'm also, like I said, I'm going to work on Winter Tree and finish that up. Um, I'm going to work on the Stitchly Rainbow, get those words put on there so I can just FFO that. And then the other thing uh, that I want to talk about is happening this weekend in the Fiber Friends Friday Night Knit In Facebook group. Um, it's also, they have a thread on their Ravelry group if you can still access Ravelry. Um, yeah, but the Fiber Friends podcast, Louise and Cheryl, um, are hosting an Easter, Easter weekend sock challenge. So it starts tomorrow. It's April the 2nd through April the 4th. Anyone can join in. Feel free. Um, and from Friday to Saturday, you uh, will be stitching socks and uh, stitching. We'll be knitting socks and uh, trying to reach a personal goal that we've set for ourselves. Um, so, you know, it's no like set goal for everyone. You pick something that's challenging to you or that you want to try to get done over the weekend and you work on that. So, uh, my goal for myself, because I'm an overachiever, hi, <laughs> um, that's fine, I know that about myself, um, but it, this started off because a month ago when uh, Sock Madness was really kicking up and stuff, um, which is a, like, speed knitting sock tournament, uh, like, it's not necessarily bracket style, but it's like a kind of like they have different rounds like March Madness does um, and people get so many people get eliminated you have to, it's a speed knitting challenge it's super cool the patterns are fun unfortunately it's hosted on Ravelry um, so if, if you can access Ravelry and want to go look um, the group is Sock Madness Forever um, there's that so anyway we started because we were talking about that and you know like People have some crazy sock knitting speeds. Um, uh, wild. It, unbelievable. I'm going to change my wording there. Um, there are some unbelievably fast knitters uh, knitting some socks for that challenge. Uh, but anyway, we it started, we were talking about that. And a lot of us were like, uh, don't think I could do that. So anyway, Louise's goal this weekend, she's going to try to knit a complete adult sock for her in one day. My goal is that I want to uh, knit a complete, um, so I'm going to say normal length socks, right? Um, not these. These are these are like a longer leg. Um, my legs, usually like the cuff will end maybe about here. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It just depends on how much leg I want to do on the socks this weekend. But um, it'll be a mid-calf length, like normal uh, length normal length for me sock um for me <laughs> pair of socks and um i'm gonna try to knit the entire pair in those three days i have knit a pair of socks again regular length socks for me in four days a couple of different times but i've never knit them in three days so 
I'm gonna try it. I think I can do it, but um, yeah, I'm super excited about this. So we're sticking with our Harry Potter theme. This is a sock set that I've had for a while now. I have tried two different times to start some socks and both times obviously have been ripped out because um, at the time I was just going through gauge issues and stuff and um, yeah, I'm not dealing with that now. So I think it's the perfect time plus third time's the charm, right? So I'm going to try to finish these socks, uh, this skein into some socks this weekend. So the tags on the inside, but this is London House Yarns in their Hermione's Jumper colorway. So if you're a Harry Potter fan, you probably, you can picture the jumper. Um, I'll wait and put a picture in, in next week or next video. I'm not, I already have enough pictures to put in things. I'm trying to cut down on my editing today. I just don't feel like doing it, honestly. Um, yeah, so anyway, this is what I'm gonna be working with. Um, this is the mini skein that matches perfectly because it came with the, it was a sock set, like I said. Um, a friend uh, gifted this to me a while ago. She bought us both a skein of it. And uh, she also made us these chocolate frog progress keepers. So it was already with this skein because that's what I was using the last time. But of course, I'm gonna keep using it now because we might as well theme it up, right? Harry Potter. And so naturally, um, but also I've been using this as my sock bag lately anyway, um, but naturally it has to go in my Slytherin sock pouch. From uh, Crochet One Knit Two. So there's that. And boyfriend is outside, so perfect timing for me to be done. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about this more week more uh, next time, but I'm going to do them on nine inch circulars. I'm super excited about it. So, uh, yeah. Thank y'all. I'm like making sure that he hasn't gotten out the car yet so I can finish this. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Thank y'all so, so much for being here. I hope that you've enjoyed, uh, all the projects. Let me know what y'all are doing. Uh, I don't really, we don't really like celebrate Easter or anything in my family. So, uh, like I said, I'll be working Sunday and knitting on some socks and uh, just generally crafting my bliss. So I hope that y'all are doing as well as we can be in, um, in all the things. And uh, thank y'all for being here. So until next time, happy crafting, y'all. Bye. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> So, uh, boyfriend stopped by for his lunch break, and I just thought I would, um, kind of finish fully what I was saying, because I didn't say everything I wanted to say, and, uh, you know, because I was trying to rush. So, anyway, let me adjust this, so you, that you don't keep getting the glare in your face. Um, yeah, so, the Easter... Easter weekend sock challenge with the fiber friends is the last thing that I was talking about. Um, I showed y'all the yarn and everything. Like I said, I'll be, uh, posting on Instagram first thing in the morning when I get up and get ready. And, um, I think I'm actually going to go to the grocery store first and grab a couple things and then we'll come back and post and start on my socks. So, um, yeah, it's a personal challenge to you. Um, so, you know, my challenge is, um, I mean, honestly, it's a challenge for me, right? I want to try to knit the pair in those three days. Louise's challenge is a sock in one day because that's what she wants to do. Um, but maybe your challenge is just, um, casting on a sock, uh, you know, period and getting it through the cuff or through the leg or maybe it's trying a new heel, trying a new technique. Maybe you want to try out a pattern. That you haven't done before um maybe you have second socks that need to be knit um that could be your goal it's literally a personal challenge um so that's fun i'm really looking forward to seeing what everyone posts in the facebook group over the weekend um yeah i think it's gonna be really fun it's crazy because we've been it's weird i gotta stop using crazy like that um but it's weird because we've been talking about this challenge. Uh, we first brought it up 
and kind of planned it uh, back at the end of February. So it's kind of crazy that it's already here, but I think we're all really excited about it. So yeah, um, that was what I kind of wanted to finish saying. I just thought, you know, I already cut myself off. So um, that is that. But for this last couple of minutes here, I thought that I would include um, a little clip of me spinning. So it's not exactly where I usually spin. It's across my living room. I usually uh, sit the wheel and spin over here. I know you have no idea where I'm pointing, but it's usually over here. I put it over there because it's a lot cleaner and there's not stuff all over the floor. So yeah, it still looks like I just moved in. It's ridiculous. Like I have bins of things. It's, anyway, so yeah, I moved it so that um, you don't have to look at all the clutter. And uh, yeah, there won't be any words. Uh, I won't be talking or anything. I am going to put music over it. Um, but, you know, I just thought it would be fun to kind of um, see a couple minutes of me spinning. I w probably would leave the sound on just so you can hear the wheel at work. Um, but I kind of want to watch. W we'll see what happens. I don't know. I kind of want to watch um, a streamer who's on right now, uh, Spark City. I've mentioned him before. He's currently playing Fall Guys and uh, playing with some friends, so I kind of want to listen to that. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, hopefully next week I will be able to film a craft with me. That's my goal. Um, we might make it. We might make it a spinning craft with me. We'll just see what I'm feeling. But yeah, until the next video. Thank you all so much for being here, and as ever, happy crafting. Bye, y'all. For real this time, because this was not an April Fool's thing, although it could have been.